I was born in Malaysia, to Pentecostal Christianity. Grew up Pentecostal, preachers, kid, missionary kid. My parents are first generation converts. From the Pentecostal side of things, when you come to know Christ, you make a 180 degree turn. There's a saying, uh, it's called making a break with the past, which means that you don't think about the ways in which how the past may continue to inform your faith. There is a concrete and even testimonial form of breaking, right? So that I used to be that, but now Jesus has saved me and I'm this. At one point when I was in the United States as a teenager growing up, I had this conversation with my dad. Dad, what kind of culture am I? Am I Malaysian? Am I Chinese? Am I American? And he said, you don't have to worry about all that stuff. You're Christian. I went to seminary and I began to figure out as I was learning all these things that my Christian culture was nevertheless, number one, American. Number two was Pentecostal. I now had language for this that I didn't have growing up. Just Christian was the only language I had. But as I continued my studies, I also began to figure out that growing up as a Malaysian Chinese American meant that there was Malaysian and there was Chinese in our family life, our identity, our practices. My journey into the interreligious world was facilitated by the awakening that there were aspects of my identity that included rather than excluded what in Pentecostal circles we would have said would have been the religious other, the Buddhist, the Confucian, the Taoist. And when I first began to figure that out, I kind of had some dissonance, right? I mean, it's like, wait a minute, we were supposed to have broken from all that, but I had to sort of begin to sort that out, that the religious other was not outside of me. I had to come to grips with the testimony that I gave was Malaysian and Chinese and American in various ways. And that meant that it included these various aspects of what constituted that identity. The Pentecost Acts 2 narrative came to the rescue for me, right? I mean, there's a sense in which the body of Christ is already uniquely constituted by many tongues and many cultures and many languages. I'm inviting us to consider how the many languages of the world are not exclusive of, but somehow also inclusive of whatever is good, holy, and beautiful in the many religious traditions of the world. So the interreligious sphere, I don't, I don't see that as something that's sort of what we do off on the side. In an increasingly shrinking world, in a, in a church that's plural and global, um, there's no way to avoid the religious other as just out there but it's already in our midst. And we need language for it. We need um, theological and spiritual skills to be able to engage in that interreligious dimension.